Okay, there's two basic ways here for transferring receivables for cash, either as a sales of receivables, that's where we'd be factoring our receivables, that's where the seller surrenders control of the receivables, uh, recorded as a sale of an asset on the balance sheet. Or we can look at, uh, use secured borrowing, that's where we assign or pledge receivables, that's where the seller maintains control of the receivables, and it's recorded as a liability, as a note payable on the balance sheet here by the seller. So let's go back here and look at our sales of receivables or factoring of receivables and how that would work here. So we have Corporation A here, the seller, and we have Bank B here, the purchaser here. So what Corporation A does here, they sell this asset of, of, of accounts receivable. Say they sell $250,000 here to the Bank B. So they remove or the $250,000 off their balance sheet here and Bank B would record here accounts receivable increase their accounts receivable here for $250,000. But in turn here, Bank B will pay cash here to a Corporation A, the seller, but they're going to uh, pay cash here a reduced amount or a discounted amount of cash based on the accounts receivable that they purchased here. And in this case, they only pay $230,000 worth of cash here uh, to Corporation A. So Corporation A would increase their cash account here for $230,000 and Bank B would reduce their cash account here for $230,000. But with the sale of receivables, we set up these uh, reserve uh, receivable account here, or it acts as accounts receivable uh, for the uh, Corporation A here, and then we have a reserve for payable or due to seller in this case here, and it acts as accounts payable. And what we do here is where we uh, assign here a percentage of the accounts receivable, either that are going to be for sales allowances or for sales discounts. And in this case, let's say it's 5% here of the $250,000 worth of uh, accounts receivable sold. So we would increase the due from factor here by to 12500 and due to seller here for 12500 So what happens with these accounts here? As these um, accounts receivable are collected, where Bank B is the controller of these receivables, so they control them. As they collect them here, they uh, accumulate any sales allowances or sales discounts. And if there's any balance after all these receivables are sold, any balance would go back to Corporation A, the seller here. So Corporation A would in, uh, would receive any balance due to any of the sales discounts or sales and allowance. And then we have this loss on the sales here. And what we have here is a uh, financing expense here. Uh, in this case, it's 3% here on these $250,000 worth of sales. So uh, for Corporation A here, the seller, they would debit a loss on the sales for that financing expense. And then Bank B here, the purchase here, would credit in this case it was $7,500. So they would re uh, re recognize that as financing revenue here on that financing expense that the corporation had to pay here to them for that 3% uh, on the accounts receivable. And then if we have a with recourse here, then we'd also have to set up a liability account for any probable uh, probable payments for any uncollectibles. That would go back to Corporation A, the seller. They would be responsible for any uh, uncollectible accounts receivable, and that's an estimated amount. In this case, we just put down an estimated amount here of $3,000. So if uh, there was no liabilities, then they wouldn't have to make any payment to a bank B, but if there is any recourse liabilities, they'd have to make a payment of whatever it is here to bank B, the purchaser of these receivables. So in for the sale of receivables, in this case, Bank B, they're going to control um, the collection here of the accounts receivable. So they bought those accounts receivable here from Corporation A, the seller. Now let's go over here and look at secured borrowing. That's where we assign or a pledge receivables. That's where the seller maintains control of the receivables. And it's recorded as a liability or a notes payable here on the balance sheet. In this case, we're going to assign, for the example, $350,000 worth of receivables here. So for Corporation A, the borrower, they set up a liability here on the balance sheet. They would credit 
their notes payable here uh, for say for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's the accounts receivable that they're, they they want to get a loan here for two hundred fifty thousand, and they're going to pledge uh, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of accounts receivable. So a corporation A uh, credits or sets uh, sets up a liability here for two hundred fifty thousand, and then Bank B would set up a notes receivable here, a debit amount for two hundred and fifty thousand, and then in exchange for that here. Um, what Bank B would do is they would pay out $246,500 here to uh, Corporation A here. So Corporation A would receive $246,500 in cash, and that is less than the um, notes payable here of $250,000. They're receiving less cash here, but that includes a finance charge, very much like the sales of receivables. So let's just go down here and look at that here. So Corporation A would have a finance expense here. They would increase that for in this case $3,500 it was $350,000 worth of of, of the uh, pledged accounts receivable times a 1% charge here. And then for Bank B, they would recognize financing revenue here of $3,500. And while we're down here, we're going to have also interest expense on this notes payable here uh, by Corporation A here. Uh, and then it would rec they would recognize it, uh, uh, the bank would recognize as interest revenue here on that note receivable. And uh, what we're doing here is we just take a percentage of the notes payable balance. Uh, whatever the notes payable is outstanding, we take that percentage that we're going to charge here for interest expense against that. And then we'd recognize whatever for the period here, the interest expense on the balance and the notes payable. In this case, it was $2,500 here. And then it would recognize as interest revenue here by the bank here of $2,500. And then the remaining balance here uh, on the notes payable and then it would be for $300. We'll look at that up there above. So let's go and look at how we're going to pay off this notes payable. Again, um, uh, Corporation A is going to maintain control of this accounts a receivable that they're going to be collecting. So let's just say for the first uh, period here, the first month, uh, Corporation A collected $217,000 on that a pledged amount of a, of of $350,000 of those counts receivable. So what Corporation A does is they take their cash amount that they collected here, they credit it out here, and they would pay um, Bank B, the lender the $217,000 that they collected. So uh, Bank B here would debit or increase their cash account here for by $217,000 and Corporation A would reduce their cash account here for $217,000 for this first payment on accounts receivable. And you can go up here and look at our notes payable. Uh, Corporation A would reduce their liability or their notes payable by $217,000 against those accounts receivable collected. And then Bank B would credit or reduce their notes payable here by $217,000. Now, again, we had this $2,500 interest expense here based on whatever the, outstand the outstanding balance on a notes payable was $250,000 at this point. So we had a $2,500, whatever the percentage was here, times that interest expense for the period here. So uh, a Corporation A here would reduce their cash account for that much and, and then uh, Bank B would recognize that here as a cash account here for $2,500. Now let's say the next month comes along here and uh, Corporation A collects $122,000 against those outstanding accounts receivable. Now what they would do here, they're going to pay off this notes payable with it. It's, a, it's pledged and assigned accounts receivable so they have to use it for paying off the notes pay are their notes payable here so the balance of the 250,000 be uh, less the amount that we originally played here of 217,000 leaves us with $33,000 so a uh, corporation A would reduce their cash account here by $33,000 and then uh, bank B would receive that here or increase their cash account here for $33,000 now you can go up here and look at our notes payable we would reduce our notes payable by that amount of the cash here uh, by $33,000 so we would have a zero balance here in our notes payable it was all it was paid off 
off against the accounts receivable that we collected here. And then for our bank B, they would reduce their notes receivable here by $33,000. So we'd end up with a zero balance. So they received all their, uh, we, they pay, the notes receivable here uh, was received or paid off here based on our cash collections here on our accounts receivable. So, and then at the end of the period here, we had that remaining amount here of $300 for the interest expense on that $33,000 or $33,000 worth of notes payable that was outstanding. So, uh, we would, uh, uh, Corp A would reduce their cash account by that much and Bank B would re uh, re record it here as a cash for the $300. $300 on that interest expense on the outstanding notes payable. So you can see total amount here of cash uh, was exchanged here $252,800 which included the assigned accounts receivable amounts here that they paid off in cash plus that interest expense on the note and that uh, was transferred it balances with the cash received here by Bank B of $252,800. So this is just an overview here of a uh, secured borrowing where we assigned a, a, pl a sign or pledge the receivables. The seller maintains control. That is, in this case, Corporation A, which was uh, the seller of these accounts receive or seller of the accounts receivable. Uh, and they're borrowing here from Bank B here, but they control the accounts receivable. And then going over here for our sales of receivable where we're factoring our receivables, now that's where the seller surrenders control. They actually sold off these accounts receivable at, to Bank B, and then Bank B does the collection here. So you can see the difference here. The seller here, that was recorded as a sale of an asset on the balance sheet. They reduced their asset account here of accounts receivable by, uh, in this case, it was $250,000. And then moving back over here to our secured borrowing, just for comparison here, the seller maintained control here. They recorded it as a liability, as a note payable on their balance sheet. So uh, for the secured borrowing, where we were assigning accounts receivable, it becomes a... Uh, it is recorded here as a liability, as a notes payable on the balance sheet, again by, in this case, Corporation A, the seller or the borrower.